From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Vehicle manufacturer BMW South Africa has brought prototype hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles to South Africa to showcase the future mobility technology to local stakeholders, test its domestic applicability, and sample consumer interest. The BMW iX5 cars brought to South Africa illustrates a powertrain shift from internal combustion engine vehicles to those powered by more eco-friendly alternatives, such as hydrogen fuel cells, with the only emissions being that of water vapor. BMW is also testing the market for a possible shift from a focus on electric vehicles to that of hydrogen fuel cells, which offer decreased refueling times and improved range, a key element to mobility in South Africa. BMW Hydrogen Program Director Dina Govender tells us about what BMW's hydrogen ambitions mean for the local market. A historic moment for us. This is the first time in South Africa that we have a fleet of hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles operating on public roads in South Africa. We launch along the sidelines of the World Hydrogen Council CEO's Conference, which happened for the first time on the African continent in Johannesburg over the past few days. We introduced for the first time today on public roads for testing. It's part of a global fleet uh, prior to a potential future announcement from the company to produce a series vehicle. What I can say, it's the most powerful fuel cell electric passenger vehicle in the world. With any new technology adoption, it has a path. And we saw that with cell phones, when I remember my dad buying his first cell phone, and very few people could afford cell phones. And now everyone has one. Um, and we saw it with electric vehicles as well, uh, completely out of the range of the normal driver, normal consumer of vehicles. And now we have hydrogen vehicles from premium to the bottom end of the market all over the world. And nobody really actually thinks about electric vehicles anymore. It really is with the rapid development over the last 10 years, brought it into a space where the consumer trusts it, the consumer can afford it, and prices have come down. And I think we'll see the same happen with the hydrogen technology adoption. We early days yet. I think really the next um, two to five years are going to be critical for this technology. While BMW develops its strategy to enter serial production of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, it is also developing a strategy to introduce a range of such models to cater for specific client requirements. We think that hydrogen vehicles are part of the future of zero emission mobility and many people are talking about hydrogen in heavy duty trucks but we think that hydrogen also plays a role in light duty vehicles and passenger cars. A hydrogen car basically is an electric car. It uses hydrogen as the energy instead of electricity that is stored in a battery. But you have all the advantages of electric driving, like the great acceleration, it's a silent ride, it's emission free, but because it's hydrogen you can refuel the car in just three to four minutes. Of course, for that, you need a network of hydrogen fueling stations. And we hope that in South Africa, there will be such a network within the next five, eight, ten years. Many countries in the world that are having hydrogen strategies to master the energy transition, because we need hydrogen in addition to electricity from renewables to be able to decarbonize completely. Europe is going ahead full steam. Asian countries like Japan, Korea, China are very strong, Australia, the Middle Eastern countries, and many countries in the world are now gearing up to produce hydrogen from renewals, especially countries who have a lot of sun or a lot of wind, and then trying to export the hydrogen to the industrial nations. But I think it's important that these countries also employ hydrogen in the domestic energy system and not just export it. With hydrogen fuel cell vehicles requiring a completely new fuel for domestic motorists, the production and dispensing of hydrogen plays an integral role which chemicals and petroleum company Sasol and industrial gas manufacturer Air Products are keenly eyeing. Air Products is currently supplying the mobile infrastructure to refuel hydrogen fuel cell vehicles and power generation assets by means of tube trailers and refueling equipment. We at Sassel definitely believe there's a role to play for us in driving this uh, hydrogen mobility uh, economy in South Africa. We've got existing assets that we can utilize, repurpose. For instance, at our Sasselberg facility, we are looking to repurpose and we've started with that exercise where we've got an existing 60 megawatt electrolyzer already on site. And we started to feed that electrolyzer of ours with three megawatts of uh, solar energy that we generate on our premises in Sasselberg. 
And that enabled us to start with the production of green hydrogen, about 150 kilograms a day. Whilst we're doing that, we're in parallel busy with the execution of a Msenge wind farm project down in the Eastern Cape. They're almost uh, ready for operations and once that comes on stream, we will be feeding in 69 megawatts of power into our Sasselberg facility feeding that electrolyzer and that will enable Sassel to produce green hydrogen at commercial scale. That's three and a half tons a day of green hydrogen. What do we do with this green hydrogen? We believe from a hydrogen mobility perspective there's a definite role to play specifically if you look at the hard to abate, hard to electrify, heavy duty segment of, of transport and there we're working with uh, several of our partners to explore what is it that we can do and how do we get hydrogen into these vehicles. From a behaviour perspective, it's exactly in terms of refuelling experience, filling up time exactly the same as what we experience today with petrol and diesel. And with our partners uh, like BMW and Toyota, who we've uh, collaborating with, we've got vehicles already in the country and that we, we're filling up and uh, yeah, collaborating with several partners. So uh, definitely looking looking forward to, to move this forward, gain a lot of momentum and work with, uh, with various uh, stakeholders and spheres of government to make this a reality. The infrastructure on, on the hydrogen side is, is still very nascent, it's, it's still developing. Uh, I mean there's, uh, there's been in the media where Shell announced that they're actually closing a couple of the hydrogen fueling stations in the US, specifically targeting uh, passenger vehicles and it's because the volumes are not there yet. Our approach is going to be slightly different uh, in South Africa. We're going to do it in a very controlled way where we would like to design this ecosystem and get it to lift and not lift the one part of this value chain a lot quicker than the other one. So we started off with a mobile refueler. We started off with a very basic 200 bar filling the vehicles. It's not sufficient to get sufficient drive with the vehicles, but the next step we already took and we're now at 350 bar. So we can get now more distance with the vehicles slowly but surely uh, showcasing the technology so that everyone can see and experience it and our next phase would be to put down a very small 350 bar and a 700 bar capability hydrogen refueling station site small and we start with a hub in Gauteng and we will start there and slowly but surely build that out and not go and blanketly just put hydrogen refueling stations down without the vehicles being here so it's it you need to do it in a very controlled way to make sure that uh, from a risk management perspective, you're doing it in a responsible manner. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.